solo maridueña, bienvenido a la charla. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, let's start before um, before talking about Cobra Kai, before digging into it. Let's start talking about your career. Actually, uh, the first taste of a big uh, series for you was Parenthood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely credit uh, Parenthood to to being the first. Uh, you know, it definitely was the first of many for me. Or I guess like the it it, it was many firsts. Uh, you know, Parenthood, right. and um, you know, I I really appreciate you know kind of the the precedent that they sent for uh, for all of the other sets that I was able to work on. But mm. uh, but it definitely holds a really special place in my heart. It definitely was, it was setting a precedent. Because yeah, I think, you know, from the people that I got to work with to, to getting just to learn the ins and outs of what this industry was, I think it really was a great first, you know, stepping stone. And I, I don't think I could have asked for a better show to work on, you know, primarily in it. And it really set the bar high for, mm. for other shows, you know, like Cobra Kai. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's only been Cobra Kai that's been able to, you know, make an experience even more enjoyable. So, so I bet. That, that, that says a lot. So uh, about three years ago, I think it's, yeah, two years ago, right? 2018, we're mm -hmm. talking about 2018, Cobra Kai. And then um, it starts on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a series when, you know, when YouTube starts creating uh, original content, it's the first series, kind of what Netflix uh, did with uh, Orange is the New Black. Yeah, uh, the you Black were the Orange course. is the New Black of, 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 of YouTube. The difference though, I think it was 60 million views. Yeah, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't know the number. I think it's, uh, but I, but I knew everyone was like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. This, yeah. it, this feels the very first big. episode. And, uh, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's fascinating to think that now on Netflix, you know, it's, it's even more and, uh, you know, 60 million felt big when we were on YouTube and it felt like it was a hit, but now with, you know, being on Netflix, it feels like it's a whole different ball game. And, and I, I'm super grateful for it. And I know that all of us are really excited to, to show off what we have in season three and eventually in season four, but we're all just kind of taking it one day at a time. What are the main differences from uh, when you were working with YouTube to third season with Netflix? You know, to be quite honest, we filmed the whole third season thinking we were going to go to YouTube. And it wasn't ah. until quarantine started that we that we made the change over to Netflix. And so I think, you know, in terms of filming, everyone was filming with the idea that it was going to go to YouTube. Nobody... You no, know, maybe the creators or people at Sony knew, but as an actor, and I know the people around me, I I had no clue that we were moving until Netflix until you know, uh, like at the beginning of quarantine. Look at that! Take me back to that day. Hey, Sholo, we're going to Netflix. <laughs> you know, I think uh, for the longest time it was like we're we're moving, but we don't know where we're moving. And, okay. And I think it was then it was like okay, this is exciting. You know, to kind of figure out who we're going with. And I think when we when I finally found out that we were moving to Netflix, I was excited. You know, I Netflix is a huge you know machine, um, but also I was a little scared that we were going to get lost in. Like, I guess the, the yes. exciting thing about YouTube is that, yeah, it might've been a smaller platform, but it felt like, like we were at the top, you know? And I feel like there's so many shows on Netflix, you know, you have all the Stranger Things, Riverdale, like House of Cards, all of these shows that are hits that are huge, huge. So I feel like I was a little bit scared that we would maybe get lost in, in just all of the you know, shows, the different shows that are in, uh, you know, Netflix, but, uh, but, you know, to our surprise, it really, uh, it really popped off and it really, right. everyone, everyone really loved Cobra Kai. And I think we we're all super excited about that. I mean, it, it's a very valid point, definitely. But, um, however, now we're gonna, we're gonna start talking about my generation, Generation X. Um, if there is this, this, you know, expectation of like wow third season or oh my god there is now a show a show ca called Cobra Kai I didn't mm -hmm. know about it and all that stuff it has to do of course with all the fans of the Karate Kid of course uh who want to know what happened to Johnny what happened to Daniel LaRusso uh you know what what's going on with them right now I I bet you had to do your research right how old are you? You're 19? I'm 19. I'm 19 years yeah, old. Yeah, of course you had to do your research. Maybe you had never seen The Karate Kid or you had. Tell me about that. 
So, so I think, you know, it's, it's good that you bring up research, but, but also something that's important is that, you know, our show is not a remake. It's not, we're not trying to make the exact same, you know, uh, it's not a formula. It's not like this happened and this happened and this happened. I think what Cobra Kai does really well is it gives you the same feel of a show or of a, of a movie like the Karate Kid without having it be the exact same. So I think while I definitely did watch the Karate Kid movies, I wasn't going into filming thinking, how can I make this most like the Karate Kid? I think right. it was just, you know, a story that that holds a lot of the same values, but not necessarily as a carbon copy. I think if it was a carbon copy, it wouldn't have sold. It wouldn't have had the, the you know, people wouldn't have been attracted to the project mm -hmm. because I think for me, I mean, every time that there is a homage to the eighties, I'm like, yes, oh my God, of course, right? But I think this is a show in which parents and kids actually get together and yeah. watch it because yeah. each one of them finds, I mean, each one of them can identify themselves with the characters. Yeah, you hit, you hit it right on the nose. And I think that's, that's been one of my favorite parts of getting to meet people in person who love the show is that it's parents with their kids and or kids who are like, I didn't even know what the Karate Kid was. But now that I watch Cobra Kai, I want to go back and watch the Karate Kid, which is sometimes a little crazy to think of. It's like, well, you don't know the Karate Kid, but it's, you know, it's, it's allowing, you know, a whole new group of people to experience you know, I, I think all all the fans of the Karate Kid would love to experience watching that movie for the first time again. I think it really changed a lot of people's lives, and getting mm. you know a whole new group of people to experience that is a, is a, is a, it's a blessing. It's awesome. And last time that I was interviewing you for uh, Univision, uh, and and I want to and I want to talk about this again because I loved your answer. Uh, I I I asked you and your castmate. Um, I understand that when a kid like you goes back and watches something from the 80s, their reaction uh, might be, really? Mm -hmm. Was that all? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, is, is that that big? But movies were made in a different way. Movies were mm -hmm. sold in a different way. They were seen in a different way. We didn't have, um, we didn't have social media. So, uh, when was it that you kind of sort of got the idea like, okay, I understand that probably what I'm seeing is not a big deal for me, but it was, or when was I, it that you I, grasped the, the, the importance? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it is very different, but I think something that, that sometimes goes overlooked is that in 1984, like you had like your summer movies and those were the movies that everyone was going to see you know that year it was Ghostbusters the Karate Kid and an Indiana Jones movie that came out and the the way that movies were released back then were way bigger than than now you know what I'm saying like you uh today it's like every weekend there's a new movie coming out where it feels like back then it was like summertime is when all of the greatest movies are coming out you know your blockbuster hits yeah. and I think the way that they rolled out movies um really allowed people to you know and, and I think that's why you you're the Star Wars of the world and the Indiana Jones are ones that have the biggest fan bases because everyone was watching those movies now it's like you know as we see with Cobra Kai it's like if it's like right place right time yeah I've seen it but there's so much content now that it's like, how can I watch everything? How can I, how do I pick and choose what to watch from where I feel like back then all, yeah, the options were, were maybe more limited, but that meant that the movies felt so much bigger. How has it been to work with Ralph Macchio and William Zapka? I mean, the, it's, I can't speak more highly about those guys, man. Like the, the, how welcoming they are and, and how, uh, highly they they held themselves is is really admirable you know they were two people who I was very afraid to work with at first like they mm. are so popular that I thought that they were going to be jerks you know like they I thought that the I was the fame was going to get to their head but getting to meet them they're both two of the most down to earth people I've ever met and I think it really kind of set an imprint in my mind like wow these guys even though Daniel Russo is arguably like one of the most recognizable characters of the 80s he still is so humble and so like easygoing and I think that's admirable like I I hope that if I ever make it big like that like I hope I act the same way and I well I know I would act the same way because my mom would beat me up if I <laughs> if I didn't but but you know I it uh 
it's refreshing. Talking about that, so are your parents Mexican American? Or- yeah, so so my mom is second generation, so I'm third generation. Okay. And um, on my dad's side, it's the same. So so um, I guess second generation. So first generation is the generation that moved. That, that is born. So if if your grandparents were the ones that came, your mother is first generation, and then you are second okay, generation. So I'm second generation. Then. You're second generation, born and raised. Okay. So there you go. So I'm so I'm second generation, and I think um, you know it, it parallels a lot to Cobra Kai because I, I I feel the same roots with my family that you know you kind of see on screen. I, it's funny to see like yes. the the attitudes of the abuelas of the world and, <laughs> and stuff like that, and I think. You know, while sometimes they're a little bit dramatic, it's like, oh, okay, I could kind of see that, you know, like my- They are dramatic, is like my that, God, you know? we are. And, uh, but, but yeah, my, my family has uh, ties to, you know, Mexico mm-hmm. and Cuba and Ecuador. So that's kind of where, oh, good so, food all the way around. Oh, tell me about it. So who is the Mexican, who's the Cuban, who's the Equatorian? So my mother is 100% Mexican mm-hmm. and my biological father is uh, half Cuban, half Ecuadorian. Oh, so look at that. That's kind of where, where I get it from. So I'm half Mexican, quarter Cuban, quarter Ecuador. Quarter, well, you know, you will have to taste the, you know, the, the three kinds of food. and, and Heck food. yeah, it's good, it's good food all the way around. Right, right. Uh, so um, yeah, you have to go to Galapagos. That's a must. I haven't been. I haven't been yet. You have so. to. Oh, all right. Um, talking about now karate. Mm-hmm. Karate. Um were you familiar to any martial arts before um, starting this project or you had to learn everything? So I was, I was familiar. I had taken a year or two of Shotokan karate when I lived in Las Vegas, but going into Cobra Kai really was fresh. Like I, I really didn't know much. And, mm-hmm. and especially because like all the sports that I did play in high school didn't require you to be as flexible as, as karate. And uh, I think that was the biggest learning curve is having to, you know, stretch for hours a day just to, you know, make sure that I'm not hurting anything. And, you know, I think for the first couple of weeks of filming, every time we go back to filming, it's a little bit difficult to kind of get back in the groove of things. But, but, but uh, now I'm super entranced by it. It's, it's something that I definitely uh, try to make sure that off season I'm, I'm still keeping up, but it, it's, it's hard, especially with quarantine. I, right. uh, you know, working out by yourself is, is much harder than working out with your friends or with co-stars. Uh, as an ex craft maga student until I injured my knee terribly and I couldn't do it anymore. It's oh, kind of addictive, isn't it? It definitely is addictive. And I think it's one of those, and I, you know, I was, I was saying this earlier, but for sports like basketball and baseball and football, it feels like there's a, there's a difference between being a watcher and being a player because, you know, only the top 0.1% of people make it. And, and I think with something like Krav Maga, <laughs> or, or or any time of any type of martial art for that matter, like you feel like you you can accomplish so much, and and I think you there's yeah. always something to work towards, and I feel like it's not like an NFL where it's like, well, I know I'm not gonna go pro, so where with martial right. arts, it's like I like it feels like there's so many different types of martial arts. You can the- totally get your black belt if you really yeah. you know if you really want it, you can totally get to be black yeah. belt. For sure, for sure. Definitely. Now that that last episode of season two, grand finale. How long did it take to record? <laughs> I feel. I mean, those fights were. It, it, they were endless. They yeah. were endless. I was like, oh my god, how long did it take to to film all of these kids fighting with each other at school? It was it it was a lot of time. Of course. Yeah. You know, uh, I guess for the one or which is usually the one that people talk about it, we had seven takes. I think we did it. We did it seven times. And after that, we were able to finish it, but we only had three days to film that whole last episode. Um, and I guess technically four days, but one of those days was taken up completely to shoot all of the hospital stuff. Uh, so it was very quick. Everyone was very, um, you had to be on your best behavior and, and, you know, really be paying attention because if not, there could have been definitely a lot of accidents that, that could have gone down. But with that being said, it really is due in part to our, uh, are really doing whole to our, to our stunt coordinating team, you know, Hito and Janelle, they are fantastic. And without them, our show would not be as good as it is. And, 
and it really is a testament to how much they love their job. And, and I'm so excited to say that I get to do like 99% of my stunts and awesome. And, every, and everyone does. And it's because of our stunt, stunt coordinators making us feel so comfortable and, and really making sure that we're prepared for these fights. You know, we only had, I, I want to say two days to rehearse all of the fights and in, in, you know, in that last episode, but because of the confidence that, you know, our stunt coordinators give us, it felt like we had, you know, months to prepare. I'll tell you what I liked as much as the fights um, in that specific episode. The kids are going back to school to Cruel Summer, Bananarama <laughs> yeah. in the background. And I'm like, yeah, because I mean, you know that, in, you know, in the, in the, in the, fir- in the movie, in the first movie, Ralph Macho is going with his bike, yeah. right? When he mm-hmm. gets into school, that's Bananarama Cruel Summer. Yeah, that's uh, definitely and, a lot And of I love. love that the show does that all the time. It's, it, it's a homage to all those songs and to the, the movies and to the 80s. And, and it's amazing. How do you guys feel about the 80s? <laughs> Since, yeah, you know, you know. I, I think uh, all of us uh, have our own, like I really love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's kind of one, one of my favorite movies from the 80s. But uh, it, I think it really depends. You know, I, I guess for me, getting to work with someone like Johnny and, and Billy, who, who uh, you know, they're stuck in the 80s. He's stuck in the 80s. Johnny, Johnny is like, oh I think, God. you know, Miguel has a little bit of a, like a different understanding of what the 80s were. I think, you know, for some people, you would say like, oh, I'm glad I live in, you know, 2020 now. But, but, you know, the way that Johnny describes the 80s really makes you want to be like, I want to experience whatever you experience because you speak about it so highly. And, and I think it's, it's funny the way that he describes, you know, some, some stuff, but, but uh, I like the 80s, you know, I, I like it just as much as anyone else. I don't know. Uh, it's a little, it feels a little bit not tangible just because I never grew up during that time, but, but it definitely sounds cool. There was so much art happening, so much art. It was an explosion of art. I think it was like one of the, the most artistic um, decades about, you know, fashion and color and music. And uh, yeah, Johnny is stuck in the 80s. And that, I mean, I love that the character is stuck in the 80s and he doesn't know what Facebook is. He doesn't know how to handle a computer. I mean, it's almost impossible you know nowadays to have a character like that but I just love it because I think it, it's a lot of the, the the comedic part of the show is Johnny being caught up in the 80s of course. and we laugh a lot with that and we laugh when Miguel is teaching him about Facebook we we cannot say anything but this uh, season, there's even more cameos. There's even more cameos at what we saw in, sec- in, 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 in season two. Did you get to talk to them or meet them? Yeah, We're not going to say who, I sp- but- I'm not going to say who, but yeah, I spoke to all of them. They're all very wonderful people. And I think, uh, you know, something our show does well is incorporate nostalgia without having it feel forced or corny. And I think, uh, you know, with the introduction of, you know, Kumiko and Chosen into season three, it's really, it feels natural. And uh, it's, it was cool to get to meet the two of them. Like they are really two outstanding people. And it's, it's cool to kind of uh, meet more uh, people who are part of the originals. But, uh, you know, aside from that, like I, I can't speak, the, they, it's funny seeing them work with people like Ralph because it, you know, although they hadn't seen each other for years and years and years, it felt like it picked up right, right where they left off. The chemistry. And it was crazy seeing like, it was, it was just like, whoa, I wonder if, if we do a Cobra Kai reboot, you know, 30 <laughs> years down the line, if I'm going to look at Mary and Jacob and Tanner and be like, what's up guys? Like, I miss you. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah. that'll never happen because we'll be friends for the rest of our lives. We won't go without that long of talking. Ah, oh, that's great. Which is which is what happened with William and and, and Ralph in the, in the first mm-hmm. place. Yeah. Uh, and they talk about that first scene at the dojo at the Cobra Kai dojo, and they said, "Oh my God, it was instant chemistry." But I do think it's. I mean, they had chemistry at the beginning, but after mm-hmm. thirty years of friendship, it has to help. Yeah, definitely. It has you know, to those, help. Those two guys are are tied together for life um the series uh, takes place in the valley i personally live in the valley uh so it, it's funny you know the, the references to the valley however um it's actually filmed in atlanta right yes yeah, all right are, uh, and so atlanta. most of you guys fly from la to atlanta yes 
and you stay there for how many months? Uh, we stay there for like three months. Uh, yeah, we, we live in Atlanta. It's, it's funny to, to have people be like, you know what? It's not filmed in the Valley. I swore it was filmed, but you won't it see a single palm right. tree and you won't see a single palm tree in, uh, in Cobra Kai. And that's because it's, it's not filmed in, in, uh, you know, Los Angeles, but, but, you know, I think, uh, we, we do at the end of every season do like one day of filming out here. Like I, I know last year it was outdoors filmed. Yeah. They filmed the, the, them driving along the, the one, the, the PCH, uh, next right. to the, the beach or, uh, me with Johnny pulling up next to the to the girls uh, in our in the Challenger. So so we do a little yeah. bit of filming in Los Angeles, but all of it's in Atlanta, really. Right. You make sure to to pay homage to LA a little bit. But what I love is just is the valley. It's not Beverly Hills. It's not um, it's not East LA either. It's it's the valley. It's always overlooked. You know, it's mm -hmm. either you know all the movies and all the series. It's either like you know Malibu and uh, and you know the West Side or or East LA and the Valley. So it's like what the happened? Valley the, a, valley? the Valley gets and, uh, a bad rap because of all the Valley girls. I feel like. Uh, <laughs> oh well, that's true. That's true. But the Valley girls are a total different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not species. a good representation of yeah. They're a total different species. They are not representation of like not much <laughs> representation of the Valley girls at Cobra Kai. Just a couple of them. Um, so Shola, what do you make of all uh, this uh, experience in, in the past two years? I hope that this is a stepping stone, you know, uh, this feels like the beginning of something really great. And I hope that it, it's just that it's, it's, you know, just as parenthood really set the bar high. I hope that, you know, once Cobra Kai finishes it, it sets the bar high and I'm able to, you know, move on to the next thing. I, I think uh, this is a great opportunity that all of us have to be a part of this show and, and I hope that it launches all of our careers, you know, and, and, and really uh, allows people to see. And, and I think, I guess, specifically for me, like, I'd love to see more diversity on camera and I'd love to see more people of color in front of the screen and behind the screen. And I think, you know, or in front of the camera, behind the camera. And, and I think because of that, I really am trying to do as much as I can, you know, to, yeah. to try to make sure that, that those strides are being made. And although I don't have as much power as as you know uh you know someone else or the people but you will someday ups. and but you're yeah it, it's right. it's it's in the it's in the making and i think it exactly. it starts it starts with me and it starts with people of color you know if we're not going to write the stories for ourselves clearly they're not going to be made for us so right. so i think uh you know it's it's hopefully just the beginning i think it was um a really good call um uh, for miguel to be one of the main characters in the story uh, you know, Johnny calling him Menudo at the beginning of the story, <laughs> which is, it, it was genius. It was genius. Uh, but, but, you know, he basically adopts this kid. Basically, you know, mm -hmm. he basically loves this kid as his own. I love the fact that Miguel is one of the main characters. I, I do. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I thank you so much. Uh, we've enjoyed it. And um, here are the mics, uh, you know, for the, um, La Charla audience so that you can invite them to watch the third season. Of course. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, my name is Shola Maiduena. This was La Charla. And uh, yeah, I, I hope to see you guys soon.